Good morning. Welcome to our daily Bible reading from uh, John's Gospel. And uh, it's quite interesting trying to work out what the right thing is to do in this situation of the pandemic. We're trying to work out when, <clears throat> if we might be able to reuse our building uh, for meetings and for services and the dilemmas and the risk assessments that we're having to go through to prepare for that. And on a personal level as well, we often have to make decisions about how to do things, what to do. Of course, in Scripture, there are moral commands that we need to obey. But in many times in our lives, it's a question of what's the best thing to do? It might not be between two, a wrong and a right. It may be two good things that we could do. And we just need to know which one to do. Or it may be just a particular problem. We're just trying to fix it and solve it in the best, most loving way that we can. And we just need wisdom on how to do that. Well, I want to read to you the beginning of a story, uh, which is uh, part of my daily readings. And this is uh, John 11, verses 1 to 7, just the beginning of the story of Lazarus. <clears throat> and um, it just gives us an insight into how Jesus made decisions and therefore how we might. So John 11, verses 1 to 7. Now, a man named Lazarus was ill. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay ill, was the same who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is ill. When he heard this, Jesus said, this illness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory so that God's son may be glorified through it. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed where he was two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. <clears throat> now, we know, if you've read this story before, that eventually Lazarus does die and Jesus raises him from the dead. And, and that's going to be our readings over the next day or so. But what governed the way that Jesus made a decision? He was asked to come, presumably to pray for healing for his friend Lazarus by a family that he loved very much. He would spend a lot of time with them from uh, time to time, go and stay there, chill out, relax. It was a place where he could uh, escape from the crowds, very close, intimate friendship. So you might think the minute he hears, he off he goes. But he's not at their beck and call. He's not at their demand. He has a different agenda to their agenda or to the world's agenda. And as we make decisions as well, we need to think, uh, what is God saying to us? His motivation is for the glory of God. Verse 4. He was concerned with the glory of God and actually that he might be glorified. Every situation, it's important to ask, how can God be glorified in this situation, with this person at this time. There's no method. <clears throat> There's no system. It isn't that, well, I did this last time, or God told me to do this last time, so I'll just do the same thing again. Every person, every situation, every time is different. Of course, there are moral commandments we need to keep to, but the pragmatic uh, position, the practical solution to things what we need to do now may be different because the situation the person the time is different and we need to be sensitive to those things but also to how in particular God might be glorified now where is God's glory today what will serve God's glory in this situation it's not about going along with what people say and want. He actually says, it says he loved them, so he didn't go. Weird. He loved them, so he didn't go. He waited two extra days and allowed Lazarus to die in the meantime. He was not at their beck and call. He was not at their disposal. He's not at ours either. So when we're asking for things, Jesus may well seem to delay he may well seem to do something that we don't want him to do because he's concerned with the glory, the glory of God. And we need to be concerned with the glory of God. What will uh, bring greater glory to God? We're not at the beck and call of other people's uh, schedules, timetables, timing, but of God's. So every time something comes up, we can ask ourselves 
God, what will bring you glory in this situation with this person at this time? God may choose to do something completely different, completely unexpected, unpredictable, that he's never done before, as far as we know. So it's a living relationship with God. It's a living relationship with his spirit. It's a living relationship with his son, Jesus. That's how we make decisions. And uh, this calls for great sensitivity, great spirituality, which probably none of us are up to. But it's also there for an opportunity to grow and an opportunity to develop and an opportunity to intensify our sensitivity to Jesus and what he is guiding us into. So today, what will bring God glory? What is he asking you to do, to say, to feel, to pray that will bring him glory? Let's pray. Father God, we thank you that you choose to use us as agents of your glory, weak, feeble, uh, inept as we are, you've chosen to use us. And we thank you for that privilege. Lord, we just pray that you'll increase our sensitivity to your voice, to your way of guiding us. We help us to be open to the new way that you want to act through us and in us and to us. We give you today, Lord God, and we ask you to glorify yourself in our own experience in life, and in those around us. Amen. Amen. So <clears throat> tomorrow is Thursday and we have our midweek service at seven o'clock in the evening. Breathe shared live on Facebook. Uh, it will be live live uh, as well. So hopefully uh, that will be an exciting experience. Um, on Sunday, we have our morning service at 11 and our French language service at 4.15, again shared on Facebook and later on YouTube. If you have prayer requests, please do let us know. And if you'd like to be part of one of our small groups, also let us know. And remember also on Sundays at five o'clock, uh, one of our leaders, uh, Malusi Delacqua, will also be hosting her magazine show uh, on Facebook uh, called uh, The Way of Life Show, where she's talking to and interviewing different people about different issues, particularly to do with getting through the coronavirus period. So uh, tune in to that as well. God bless you. God be with you. And he is with you. Amen.